Hi, I'm Sarah Lacey. I'm still here with Tim O'Reilly and Reid Hoffman, and we're talking about Web 3.0, how all of this data that's been collected is going to be applied in the business world. We talked in an earlier segment about sort of the scary aspects of all this data. Let's talk about the good aspects of it. What's exciting about this wave to you, Reid? Well, I think that the, um, you know, the progress in terms of what kinds of applications you can create comes from what you can do with data, right? So, we, for example, we were just talking about healthcare data. Obviously, if you can begin to uh, map uh, certain kinds of things into certain kind of genomics, you can do preventive medicine a lot better. Mm -hmm. um, if you can track, uh, you know, like for example, propensities to certain kinds of diseases with certain kinds of genetics, you'd have to make sure that the government or insurance companies don't use that in a bad way. But you could use it for, you know, for proactive medicine. Well, you could even imagine a world in which, say, Medicare reimbursement worked a lot like. Uh, uh, keyword advertising, where you mm -hmm. pay for clicks. You know, you actually pay that, hey, this ad worked. Mm -hmm. And what if you said, we know a lot about which procedures work. We can measure outcomes data. What if you can create a feedback loop for healthcare that was like the feedback loop that's in the middle of transforming advertising? Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there are people at Department of Health and Human Services here in the U.S. who are thinking that way. They're trying to figure out how to actually get uh, the healthcare system to work more like Google. Mm -hmm. I would take another thing that both Tim and I support, which is the Sunlight Foundation. Mm -hmm. And you can basically take out all, of, uh, probably won't be all, but a lot of government data and you make it mungible. Mm -hmm. Well, then you can actually begin to actually really understand where the money in the government's going. Mm -hmm. And you can begin to actually have people say, look, here, I'm running a bunch of reports and here's some, a way we could be more efficient, mm -hmm. right, in terms of that sort of thing. So you just, you know, the availability of data in order to be able to guide intelligent accent, I mean, mm -hmm. that's the basic summary. Mm -hmm. Now, you can get complicated, you can put multiple reports of data together, but like, you can act intelligently when you have data. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think there's uh, you know very personal aspects too. There's this whole quantified self movement, and you see all these startups that are starting to produce interesting sensor-based devices to produce data about your personal life and habits. You know, Fitbit, so on. Uh, Fitness Keeper, uh, which is started out as a running application, now becoming a hub. I should disclose I'm an investor, mm -hmm. uh, and. Uh, um, I think that's a really fascinating area where we are going to be able to instrument a lot of parts of our life that we didn't understand. Mm -hmm. Is uh, there yeah. an aspect of that that's unhealthy? Um, yeah, I mean, you can become obsessive about <laughs> anything. Um, and mm -hmm. there's no question that you know, any of these things can, can make you uh, crazy, but mm -hmm. they can also make you sane. You mm -hmm. can start paying attention to what makes a difference. Right. Yeah, I mean, no technology only has positive benefits, or make mm -hmm. maybe penicillin. Right. <laughs> it only has positive benefits, but. Uh, no, 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 it, it allowed us to feed, we feed it to animals and it's creating ah, a. Good point, yes. <laughs> Even <laughs> penicillin's data. Yes. Yeah. right, uh, yeah. and so uh, the real question is, is it, is it net massively aggregate positive, mm -hmm. right? I mean, uh, you know, mobile phones, right? You know, it, you can be interrupted all the time, but on the other hand, you now have a connectivity and a navigation device Right. with you at all places, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it's net much more positive. Mm -hmm. And you know, I think the progress of data is very similar, right? Which is, look, there, there will be, like the progress of data is a progress of technology mm -hmm. and what the technology can do with it. And there, you have to be careful about it. You have to make sure that what you're creating is net massively more positive, but the possibilities are being much smarter about like, okay, what things do you build or enable? like. You know, for example, uh, what can we do with uh, self-driving cars? Mm -hmm. right? Hey, I was just about to mention yeah, that too. Yes. I love self-driving it, cars. It's such, yeah, somebody once, uh, I heard, I forget who it was, was saying, why is Google doing this? And I go, if you don't understand that, you don't understand Google. It's, <laughs> the, you know, it's a massive data application. Yes. You know, uh, it's so cool. You know, they actually photograph the road surfaces when mm -hmm. they, they sent the cars around. You know, who would have, you know, I mean, they, obviously they thought of it. But yes. What a wonderful, uh, you know, far-reaching, you know, insight into the power of data that they could actually, you know, start gathering, you know, a whole other stream of data. They did range finding to various things like si signs and stoplights. Mm -hmm. You know, all this to feed the intelligence of, right. you know, an autonomous vehicle. Well, it reminds me too of like the Google like underwater things, the Google Sea things and Google Earth. And I mean, mm -hmm. I love the aspects of, you know, just a resurgence of like science and pushing these frontiers that, you know, kind of fell out of fashion for a while in technology. Yeah. But but to, to drive the, <laughs> drive, haha, the car <laughs> example for a second, I mean, part of what things people don't realize is all of the different consequences. So consequences in terms of labor market, 
right? Essentially, you're freeing up a lot of productivity time for people. Consequences in terms of efficiency in, in terms of city uh, real estate space. Where does the parking need to be? Mm -hmm. right? If you have a self-driving car, car goes off and parks itself, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? As a matter of fact, they can all, probably park themselves exactly this way because they can kind of say, okay, I need to get out now, and then the cars can let them out. Yeah. I mean, all kinds of things. This one change has massive repercussions. Long. Well, you already see this some startups for car sharing going beyond yes. Zipcar, mm -hmm. uh, you know, peer-to-peer -peer car sharing. Now imagine peer-to-peer -peer car sharing when your car can drive itself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. the, you know, there are some really interesting uh, futures down that path. Now, they may not come about, but you can certainly see signs that people are thinking right. in that direction. And that's really the way to think about the future. You think about a plausible future, uh, which may, not, may never come true. And then you think about some other plausible future. And then you just look for data points that say, oh, yeah, it's becoming more like that one or it's becoming more right. like that one. What about issues that a lot of like mega cities in the emerging world face? Things like, you know, that, like infrastructure, like waste disposal, water, food shortages. I mean, things that the planet is sort of facing because of these, you know, several billion people coming into the middle class. Do you see ways that data could solve some of those core problems? Well, you certainly can get, if you have a large enough data corpus, you might be able to do, to make, to, for example, shared practices and understanding about what is energy efficient or mm -hmm. what are waste disposal methods or that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. That's not quite a massive data. That, that suggestion is not quite massive data. Uh, but you can, you can see that if you have a much better understanding of where the, how the system is working and how it's breaking down, mm -hmm. that you would be able to invent better solutions. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this is actually shifting. I mean, my interest in this usually goes to crowd-based work, mm -hmm. right? Because the whole notion of, of actually getting, like, for example, uh, you know, uh, X Prize kind of things, where you say, okay, let's get a network of people working on this mm -hmm. and bring back the the right and best ideas. Now, sharing the data across all the thing may be where massive data becomes interesting for that. I don't know. Do you have other? Yeah, I don't ideas know. I mean, material? obviously, there there are. Um, I, I think you're on to something, and I, I'd have to think mm -hmm. more about yeah. it. Uh, how will megacities use right. data? I mean, you see in uh, is, Singapore, is, they have those gantries that, that notice like everyone, every car has a chip and they know when traffic patterns are peaked, you're charged different amounts for when you are. Maybe yeah. if you knew how everyone was working with their traffic patterns, you could, I mean, yeah. something. Yeah, I, I think there certainly are future forms of social uh, organization that could be driven by uh, various optimization algorithms. We might not like living in that future, though. <laughs> well, you know what? I don't like uh, traffic in Mumbai. That's worse. So. Yeah. Well, the thing I think is interesting in your question, which I, I think, like Tim, I need to think more about, but is can you take the data patterns to make massive material changes, material world changes? Right. Because right? what you're talking about is like energy, you know, not coordination yeah. of people, not you know, how do we... Uh, communicate, coordinate, connect better together, which is already happening in good ways. Mm -hmm. But how do we actually change uh, serious physical world problems, mm -hmm. right? And I think uh, that there I is mean, an answer, but I don't know. Yeah, uh, but there's also some maybe not quite as core as you say, but uh, here, here's a data example. Um, a number of cities have started to figure out, uh, you know, what their uh, foreign communities are by looking at money flows. Right. So they, they go, okay, we actually need to have our uh, materials in these 15 languages because we can see that we have big immigrant populations uh, based on you know, either cell phone traffic uh, mm -hmm. to those locations or uh, you know, money transfers to those locations. So there's data trails that tell us, oh yeah, there is a connection between this city here and this other city in this part of the world. Mm -hmm. And so there's, I think there's going to be a lot of interesting uh, uh, data that starts telling stories to policymakers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so the human coordination and what humans are doing, absolutely. It will be interesting. You know, I bet you there is still something to learn on the material sciences part, but we'll need to think about it more. Oh, yeah, material. Um, yeah, by the way, I mean, if you want to talk about the future, material science is one of the areas that. Uh, it's going to blow our minds. Well, but if you, I mean, if you think about commodity assets, you think about things like water, you think about things like soybeans, you think about things like meat, and how to route them through a global economy. Is that that different than how you how you move, you know, a perishable seat on an airline? Well, the transports, uh, transports, and all that 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 massive data will have 
huge effect on routing, right. effic uh, efficiency, and all the rest of the stuff. What I was actually thinking about is like, well, how do you do waste disposal? Not right. the transport of it, but can you get it so that waste disposal is generating less landfill? Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, and that's what I think. By use of data, that's mm -hmm. interesting. I, I, I'm sure there is an answer, but I don't have one off the. <laughs> but I, I, I think you, your your point about uh, you know managing uh, waste in a different sense is is. Uh, is, is really worthwhile. It makes me think of a comment that Alex Rampell of Trial Pay made about Groupon. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, their future has got to be in real-time inventory management for perishable goods. Yeah. He said, because at the end of the day, we, we had just had lunch, and when we went in, the place was super crowded, and when we left, it was nearly empty. He said, you know, they don't want to offer a coupon for this restaurant. They want to offer a coupon for this restaurant at 1.30. Right. You know, well, because they, you want to, they want to shift, about, yeah. uh, yes. they want to shift the, uh, you know, the the occupancy by a half hour, mm -hmm. you know, because they they have a perishable resource that they could extend, and I, I think that we will start to see, uh, you know, applications of technology to uh, help us get more out of uh, the fixed plant, uh, the fixed labor resources yeah. mm -hmm. uh, by trying to you know s spread the use across uh, those resources. Yep, scheduling better. coordination for sure. Yeah.